Hi, I'm Howard Levy. I started harmonica when I was uh, 18. And uh, started piano when I was eight. And so I was already a, a good piano player by the time I picked up this. From the age of eight, I, I had loved music and been talented at it. I had a natural ability. But, you know, with anything like that, you have to work real hard. I mean, you can have a natural ability, but that does not make you a professional musician. I grew up in New York, but a friend of mine there got really got into Chicago blues. And he was the, uh, the drummer in our little high school band that we had. We were just a circle of friends, and we started playing together. And he turned me on to Paul Butterfield, uh, Junior Wells, uh, Little Walter, uh, James Cotton. I'd say those were the four guys that he listened to. And uh, then he started playing harmonica. And he got really good, really quickly. He had a natural feel for it. He was also a violinist, a very talented guy. And I thought, well, you know, if he could pick it up and sound really good within a matter of months, maybe I should check this out, uh, you know. So I went to uh, Manny's Music on West 48th Street in New York and spent $2.25 on my first Marine Band in the Key of G. And then I went over to his house. I said, okay, now teach me how to play. On, well, here's, you know, he puts your mouth on it like this, blah, blah, blah. I say, how do you bend a note? He said, I'm sorry, I can't teach you how to do that. So what do you mean you can't teach me? So said, well, it's just, it's this thing. It's inside the mouth. I can't really explain it. Oh, oh. Like, I've never been confronted with an invisible instrument before. And this is the amazing thing about this instrument, that it's the only instrument I know that's totally invisible to the person playing it. And there's no hands and no eyes. And so it's, it's, it's really a feel, almost more like riding a bicycle than playing an instrument. And it's for that reason, I think, it is incredibly, uh, you get incredibly absorbed in this, you go into this world when you play the harmonica. Most of us, you notice when we play, most of us have our eyes closed, we look like we're in a trance, and it's because we are. <laughs> As soon as I figured out how to bend notes, I started playing blues licks that I had heard other guys do, because I was a very good pianist already, so I had a really good ear, and uh, I was writing very advanced jazz tunes, so I was sort of in these two worlds. I was in this advanced jazz piano world, and then I was in this learning how to play the blues harmonica world. And I wanted to connect this instrument with that. And just even to be able to play simple things like the minor third in the second octave, which wasn't on the instrument. As I started exploring the instrument more and more, I realized that there were notes that weren't there, and it was very frustrating to me as a piano player who, if you go into a practice room at a school, let's say, and there's a piano that has a broken key or two on it, you're not going to want to sit and play it. You're going to go to another room until you find one that has all the keys. So I said, well, I have to figure out how to get these missing notes. Because I'm 18, what do I know? I wasn't a great harmonica player. I was just a kid who started playing. And that's why, for me, it, it, the development of my playing those things went parallel with the development of my harmonica playing. But that note that I got, it was the... Uh, so I go... Just like any other blues guitar player, da, 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 just straight across the neck, so easy. On the harmonica, you can't do it and so, until I did that. And so I'm just amazed that more people didn't do it before me. I, I was just really surprised. There, there are two that I know of who did. One recording of a guy who hit a note 
on a, on a record in 1931, and then Will Scarlett, who was doing this in the 1960s, apparently. <laughs> So I'm really the first one to come along and integrate these notes into a musical style and make the instrument into a fully chromatic 12-tone instrument capable of playing in any key. So instead of just going, I could play in that key. So I'm playing blues. This is an A flat harmonica, so I'm playing a G flat on it. Or your. And I see the piano keyboard in my mind to do this, being a piano player. And that's, that's my reference point, to get these things in tune and to play coherent musical lines, is this. I'm seeing, you know. You know, it's, it's coming out of this. People send me stuff, I mean, uh, from various different harmonica companies, and guys will customize harmonicas and give them to me, and uh, sometimes they're really good, the customized ones. Uh, sometimes I'll like harmonicas from different companies, uh, but I always prefer the sound of a honer. Uh, it's the one I started on, it's the ones that, that due to the size of the reeds, um, the overblows and overdraws work better on them. They just, it just, they just do. I started on Rain Band, and then for years I played the Golden Melody. And uh, when I was playing Golden Melody, I didn't know why I liked it so much more. Uh, years later, someone said, you know, Howard, that's the first diatonic harmonica made in tempered tuning. And I said, oh, really? What's that? I mean, I knew what tempered tuning was, but I didn't know that before the Golden Melody, which is why it's called Melody, all the diatonic harmonicas that anyone made were tuned to just intonation or something close to it which is the natural tuning system based on the overtone series, so that all the chords sound really in tune. But some of the melody notes, if you play them singly, will sound very flat. And uh, players, enough players wanted to play melodies on this instrument that Honer started making the golden melody. And so I played that probably for 20 years, maybe something like that, until Joe Felisco started customizing marine bands for me. And I, I liked his customizing so much. And I had always really liked a wooden comb anyway. I wished that, that there were a wooden comb harmonica that I could play. And then he found some wood that didn't swell and uh, put uh, the special 20 reed cover plates on top of it. So I have a very much of a mongrel here. It's a combination of a marine band, a special 20, and this uh, special wood that doesn't swell. <laughs> Wow. 
one of the ways that I learned new music on the harmonica is if I was on long tours on the road and you have a lot of time to yourself and you could do one of several things. You could get drunk, you know, get depressed, read books, whatever, or you could just practice. And so I practiced a lot when I was on some of these long road trips and just said, okay, why don't I learn how to play Vol de Mosca on the harmonica? Or sometimes I practice while I'm driving, you know, one hand on the wheel, one hand on the harmonica. Which hand do I? I think I do it this way. <laughs> so I practice while I drive as well. <laughs> Since I like to play, quote, music on this instrument, I feel that usually I can come up with something that sounds right for the tune, for whatever, whatever style of music I'm playing in. Uh, and especially if, it's, if the music has some sort of emotional depth, then it's a lot easier for me to play. It's hard for me to play music where I can't believe in the music. <laughs> <laughs> 